Yo, what's up guys, it's Kizzle here and today we're back at it again, once again, with another video for you guys and today what I have for you guys is the Call of Duty, the making of Call of Duty, it's about to start, I'm gonna mute my microphone Everyone, right I'm here. Everyone, I'm Allison Hayslip and welcome to the latest episode of Making Call of Duty. We're excited to be coming to you live right before the doors open at E3. We are here at the Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood. This is an amazing place with decor re very reminiscent of World War II, but also it's just one of our favorite places to hang out in L.A. during E3, so we're glad you can join us here. Um, it is such an exciting time, and Call of Duty will have a lot of new things to be sharing with you all. But today, we will be talking with some of the team from Sledgehammer Games about Call of Duty World War II multiplayer and showing you some of the unique features in this year's game. And of course, we want to hear from you. So if you have a question, let us know in the comments section, and we will possibly be answering them throughout the show. But now, without further ado, let us kick off this episode of Making Call of Duty. All right, with me to kick off the show is Michael Condry, studio head of Sledgehammer Games. Hi, thanks for joining us, Michael. It's a pleasure to be here. Are you so excited to be here uh, sharing multiplayer with the world right now? Couldn't be more excited. <laughs> I mean, the studio has spent three years working on this, pouring our hearts and souls into it, yeah. and we get to bring it to fans. That's why we do what we do. So this is a really special conference for us. Right, so what's the approach you took in developing this year's uh, multiplayer? Call of Duty returns to boots on the ground in World War II, and that for us was really special. Our opportunity to take it back where it hasn't been for, frankly, 10 years. And with an arsenal of iconic weapons and iconic map locations around the world and that gritty, intense World War II combat, this is a ton of fun. Right, so since we are going all the way back to World War II, what are the new and innovative things about this multiplayer that you guys have developed? Oh man, we have so much to talk about today. Yeah. We really do, I mean, boots <laughs> on the ground, fans are gonna love it. But we've got a ton of innovation as well. Divisions, we'll talk about in a little bit. We replaced our Creator class. I know there's a lot of questions on that. We have headquarters, the biggest innovation in multiplayer this year, and war, a ton of fun and a brand new way to play Call of Duty MP. We're going to show you some of that. Right. Now, you keep saying boots on the ground, but yeah. what does boots on the ground mean to you? Well, this is coming back to where the franchise is great. This is strategic gun on gun action with sight lines that you can identify and really work together in the classic Call of Duty way, but updated for the latest generation of consoles. So quite literally, boots on the ground. <laughs> it is boots on the ground. <laughs> okay, so there's been so much excitement around this reveal. Fans are clamoring for more information. Yeah. What do you hear them asking about the most? Fans have been amazing. They yeah. really have. And I mean, we couldn't be more grateful for the outpouring of support. Last night was bonkers with the reveal. So At the Sony presser. Yeah, that yeah. was amazing. And everybody at the studio is so proud and thankful for the fan reaction to that. And then there's some other things they want to talk about, some things we're going to talk about today. Um, I think we're going to talk about, you know, the use of Nazi iconography in the game. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Uh, it's something we really wrestled with. You know, there's this responsibility to balance what really happened in an authentic way. But, you know, we need to be respectful for the victims in this very dark time in human history. I mean, this was, this was a massive war, a global conflict. 100 million people perished in this. So ultimately, we decided that you know, Nazi symbols like the swastika had a place in our campaign to be historically accurate. Um, you know, you see that in film and TV. Mm -hmm. so. But, you know, our multiplayer and zombies, this is a global community. This is a global community where the experience is visceral and intense. We didn't feel like it was appropriate there. I mean, it's a, it's a dark symbol and we have to be really respectful and mindful of you know, the customs regulations of different territories, and we wanted the whole community to be able to play together. So you'll see in the campaign in a very historical, accurate, and respectful way, um, but not in multiplayer or zombies. Well, and I've heard you talk about the game a lot in the sense that because you are basing it on true stories, it needs to be historic, historically accurate for the generations that are up, coming up that don't have people who are still in that war. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I yeah. mean, for many of us, we think of Save It Private Ryan as an icon of of the war, and that was 20 years ago, right? Yeah. 10 years ago since Call of Duty's been That makes there. me feel so old. <laughs> I know, and, and you think this might be the first real introduction to World War II for a whole new generation of gamers. So right. there is a respect and, and a responsibility we take with that. It's really profound, and, and we're excited. And you'll see that in the campaign and 
Hopefully you'll fill that in multiplayer. Right. Well, let's talk a bit about the multiplayer trailer that was released last night at the mm -hmm. Sony presser. Um, fans think it looks incredible, but yeah. also they're asking, because at the beginning it does say actual in-game footage, but it looks so good that they're like, is it? Is it actual in-game footage? So what's what's the answer? What's happening What's the here? answer? Yeah, it's such <laughs> an awesome question to get yeah. when people have to ask, is it real? Because it is. You know, we've spent tens of thousands of hours with many hundreds of developers pouring into this. You're seeing it now. It yeah. looks gorgeous. It really is. We spent hundreds of hours capturing this trailer for fans, and it's all in software. I think the camera work, like right there, it's so, like following someone's feet, it's just, it looks so incredible. Yeah, it's brutal, it's visceral, it's gritty, it's World War II. And when fans get their hands on it here at the show or at the beta or in November and, and launch, everything you're seeing, you get to play. Please tell me we get our hands on that flamethrower. You do. That's, yes. uh, and it is. It's powerful. God, that looks so cool. Um, and also, right at the end of this trailer, we get to see some vehicles. We do. Can you tell us about the tanks? I can. <laughs> yeah, that's a qu another question that people have a lot on their minds, is how are we incorporating vehicles? Now, Call of Duty traditionally has had controllable score streaks, and we do yeah. as well. You saw that in this piece with the uh, P-47 Fighter Strike. But what you're seeing right now here is an exclusive clip of our war mode. And we're going to talk oh. with the lead designer of war mode in a little bit. The tank, you can jump up on it, get on the 50 cal, um, you can escort it. That is exclusive to the war mode. Wonderful. God, it looks, I can't take my eyes off of it. It looks so good. Thank you so much. Uh, everyone at home, stick around because just coming up next, we are going to talk about headquarters and divisions. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> everyone, we are back, we are live, and with us now is Greg Reisdorf, multiplayer designer of Sledgehammer Games. Uh, and we are going to start talking about headquarters, so if you guys have any questions about headquarters, get them in now so we can ask them. Greg, hi. Hi. Welcome. What is Thanks. it like working on a Call of Duty game and then coming to an event like this to reveal it to everyone? It is so exciting and very stressful at the same time. It, <laughs> it's great to be able to show it to fans finally. We've been sitting on it for two and a half years, and it's just really excited to be here. Right. Has, have you, do you have any cool stories yet? I know E3 technically starts in like an hour yeah. or something like that, but we've all been here this whole weekend. There's already been all the pressers. What's the coolest thing you've seen yeah, so far? They're, they're loving the game. They're playing it. It's, it's awesome to see people you're just picking it up and just re that return to boots on the ground is just so powerful. I feel like boots on the ground needs to be the tagline. <laughs> like Call of Duty, World War II, boots on the ground. It just keeps going. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about headquarters, because it's this new feature in Call of Duty. What is the idea behind it? Yeah, new feature. It's, it's big. It's the biggest innovation in multiplayer this year. This is a 48-person living experience, and it's really an evolution of what we worked on with Advanced Warfare. It started six years ago. We really wanted to bring your soldier to life, and we had that with your your character, your Call of Duty character for the first time, you saw that in the virtual lobby. Now we're taking you into a space. This is off the front lines experience where you can compete, be social, show off, and engage in new ways. It's, um, it's really special. So what inspired you guys to bring this feature into the game? Well, one of the things was the virtual lobby from AW. And really looking at that, we love that idea and that aspect of the game. And we wanted to just bring it to the next level and have that that idea of socializing in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and really, that's that's where we set off from. So what are the interactions you can have in headquarters? So you can do a ton of things. You can commend other players, which is just, hey, you're doing a great job. Back. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's uh, shootouts that you can challenge other players to. There's a, shootouts? <laughs> there's a like, one, can you duel? You can, you can duel in a 1v1 pit. Oh, there's wow. actually, you can go and queue up for a 1v1 pit, and you can sit in there and see how long you can survive in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's just so many things. Okay, sweet. So we actually have a live question for you guys. Uh, Taylor Saderhoyt, I hope I just said your last name correctly, uh, asked, what is headquarters used for? It's, it's used for all your socializing. You can go here and party up. You can compete. Like Michael was saying, you can go into the 1v1 pit, all these cool things. It's also right available at your fingertips. So when you go into matchmaking and when you matchmake, you can actually pop back into the hub, into the live lobby, into the... 
<laughs> we've had so many names for it over the development <laughs> headquarters, um, where you can actually go back into headquarters and run around in this space and socialize while you're still in that queue. Uh, and then you're just going to pop right into your match. Nice. So what inspired the design of the space? The design of the space is all about D-Day plus three was our kind of go-to name for it. This is after the, the successful invasion of Normandy. The Allies used the beachhead to bring in troops and to bring in supplies as the staging area to go off to the front. And so that's what we looked at and said, hey, this would be a great staging area right. for our players to go between matches when they first boot up the game, when they're about to leave the game. All those areas where you just kind of want to unwind and hang out and have a good time, like that's what the headquarters is for. Nice. Okay, we're going to take one more live one. Rafael Ramirez asks, how many people in headquarters? There's 48. 48. So, yep, you and 47 others can... You and, you and 47 others. <laughs> that sounds like the worst frat house ever, but <laughs> the best multiplayer ever. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to ask one more quick one because this is a good one. Jack Sekhan, sure, uh, asks, will headquarters be the multiplayer main menu? It's pretty much the multiplayer main menu. Yeah. Uh, in that sense. So you're you, on boot up, you're there. You're in the headquarters. You're running around. And if you want... You just hit the options button on your PS4 and you jump right into your matchmaking and your virtual lobby experience from there. Great. Awesome. Okay, well, let's move on to divisions because that's new for this game too. Uh, so if you guys have any questions about div divisions, throw them in now. But tell us about divisions. How do they differ from one another now? Yeah. You know, one of the things we really love about the three-year development is it gives you a chance to look at all parts of the multiplayer experience. And, you know, we took a look at create a class and we really wanted to bring something new and so divisions replaces create a class and I know there's a lot of questions about that <laughs> so people are going to see it at E3. It for us really embodies the fantasy of enlisting in World War II. So this is where you'll begin your experience in the headquarters and you'll enlist into one of five iconic divisions and those divisions will really set you out to differentiate your play style, your look and really how you approach gameplay. Nice. Okay, we're going to go straight to a live question for this one. Uh, Damon George asks, are we going to have to use the weapons and perks of a division, or are we going to be able to manipulate classes? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question, because oh, you are going to be able to manipulate classes, and perks are gone. So, oh. so we have division training, which is going to really focus on your play style, and that is going to then be augmented with your basic training. And your basic training is going to add that flexibility so you can go play how you want to play in the game. Off of that, you're going to have your primary weapon, which has your attachments, and your secondary and equipment that you can choose. All right. So if you're someone like me who just like Leroy Jenkins himself into the situation, <laughs> yeah. there's you're, a you're I can manipulate yeah. my character to do that. Yeah. Great. Good. Uh, Pete. Oops. Sorry. Pete Perez asks, will we be able to customize our characters? Which I think we just yeah, answered. There's, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of that going on. Yeah, yeah. There certainly is, and you know that's really the evolution of headquarters. Like your character progression, the things you do to re be rewarded and really show off. Now with 48 players as that staging ground, that customization really shows off there. Nice. So what type of loadouts will you be able to create? All kinds of loadouts. Yeah. So you, you have the classic run and gun, which is going to be your airborne division. You have your armored division, which is all about taking points and that aggressive play style with explosives. Um, you're able to take the mountain division, which is the one shot, one kill division. Essentially, you're going to... I'll be terrible at that yeah. division. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> it's, it is difficult, <laughs> uh, but it's a lot of fun if you can get in there and master that skill. Right. Uh, there's the expeditionary division, which is all about shotguns and really being immune and uh, to be able to take these points. Right. What are um, we looking at right now? What... Uh, is this a specific division? This would be the armored division. Okay. So you're within the armored division, your division weapon skill. So he's running this... Uh, LMG, well, not anymore, but uh, the LMG you can now mount it on any surface and really just lock down points and hold points down. Um, with the rifle division, uh, infantryman division, which he's in right now, you have the bayonet charge. Um, and all of these divisions can be... Oh, there it was right there. Yeah, all <laughs> these divisions have progression, and so you're leveling these division skills up. Um, you're leveling your uh, division training up as well. Okay. Uh, Logan Perry asks... Are divisions unlocked by ranking up, or all of them are unlocked from the beginning? So there's a there's a, still a lot of stuff around progression being worked out. We're still very early in um, development. Got it. So there's a lot coming. You'll be able to see more beta. It'd be great. Nice. It sounds like you guys can like vote on what you want. <laughs> <laughs> They're still trying to figure that out. Ooh, here we go. Shirley asks, will there be female characters? There will absolutely be female characters. Yeah. We talk about, you know, your multiplayer career is about you going into battle. So 
We show diversity in the characters, both on the Allied and Axis side, both factions as you play. Um, multinational characters to choose from, um, plenty of gender diversity. It's important to the game. It's important to what happened in the war. It's important to us as a studio. Yeah. I like playing as a lady now and then. Uh, okay, Dalton Drake Smith asks, what vehicles will you, will you be able to take control of in MP? Did we answer that in the last one? A little bit. You kind of get the tank? Yeah. And you kind of... But uh, you're there's, not there's like... a lot of score streaks that are controllable yeah. within the game. So we do have the fighter strike, which is one that's available here at E3, where you can get into it and you're actually doing strafing runs on the ground. So it's pretty cool. You can see it in the trailer. I want to do that. <laughs> can I do that when we go to the floor? You can. You yes. Can. <laughs> do I have an in? Just... <laughs> uh, Angel Santiago asks, are you going to be able to switch divisions? And if so, how easily? Very easily. Oh, great. So it's one of the big things about being in a division. We want you to be able to enlist in it and, and feel the, the historical you know, essence of it. But at the same time, we don't want it to restrict gameplay. And we want you to be able to get in there, switch your division when you want, and go and play how you want to play. Great. Oh, this kind of ties into that. Uh, Mike Tannis asks, will we be able to slide or dive or nothing at all? Lol. <laughs> he, he does. He does laugh out loud at the end of that. So. So we do have diving within the game, which in, yeah. within the game, um, there's no slide. So it's we we looked at both of them and we really liked the dive mechanic and we felt that fit our game better. We felt it fit boots on the ground better, um, and that's what we went with. Nice, awesome. Well, Greg, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, uh, guys. Up next, we're going to be talking about war mode, which I know a lot of you are excited about. So get your questions in for that. Welcome back, guys. We are live, and with me now is Sean Susi, multiplayer designer from Sledgehammer Games. And we're going to talk about maps and war modes, so get those questions in now so I can read them off my swanky little iPad right here. Hi, Sean. Hi, Welcome. how are you? Good to be here. Uh, so tell us what it's like to be one of the lead designers on a Call of Duty game. Oh, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's a, you know, to be a part of something like this is just a huge opportunity. Um, I mean, especially multiplayer. Yeah, multiplayer. I mean, it's 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 awesome. Multiplayer. I'm a huge multiplayer gamer. I love multi yeah. multiplayer games. I play tons of Call of Duty and all the other ones out there. So. You don't get tired of it working on it. Oh no, no. <laughs> I go awesome. I go home and play more. At That's home, awesome. So. <laughs> it's got to be a lot of pressure though. Like, it is maintaining the honor of multiplayer. It is. I mean, you know, Call of Duty's got such a such a history behind it. You know, and you know, we care so much about the fans, and we just want to make sure that everything that we do is great for them you know so there is there is pressure for sure um it's fun and yeah it's it's awesome it's great nice okay so tell us about the maps in the game what are they like so the maps uh you know one of our big goals with the maps was to um put players in these iconic world war ii locations and, and are we looking at one of them right now yeah so this is this is a flyover of point to hawk um so it's this is game of thronesy i like it yeah <laughs> So yeah, I mean, this is this is a perfect example. This was part of the Allied invasion of Normandy. Um, it's a it's a location. If you pop that into Google, you can find out what happened there. And we're kind of putting players into that environment and uh, you know letting them duke it out in there. And um, so yeah, we wanted to you know just bring as much history as we wow. could in in multiplayer. Um, so we do that with the settings and make sure that the map environments are are varied. This is the trench section in Point the Hawk. Uh, so trenches and bunkers, get, getting that really kind of iconic, you know prototypical World War II kind mm -hmm. of environment. So that was that was really important to us and just provide a variety of gameplay experiences for players as well. How has the design of these maps evolved since the previous Call of Duties you, you've made? Um, so one thing that, that was really important for us was to, to just really push the boundaries of um, and the range of, of play style opportunities. Right. You know, going back to boots on the ground gave us some opportunities to kind of control gameplay a little bit more in ways that, um, you know, is, is is refreshing and, and nice for us. Um, so, you know, wanted to make sure that 
as you know, you can see you're going on the cliff side here on Point to Hawk. This is kind of an area where a little bit longer range comes into play. You've got the trench section where you get some really cl up close, super fast, intense gameplay going on. So really wanted to make sure that we push those play styles. And just oh, give... that was such a cool camera move right yeah, there. Yeah, it's cool. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was sweet. I was glad I was looking right at that. <laughs> so one of, one of the things we we're trying to do with maps is really encourage division play style, right? So yeah. definitely. what you'll see throughout all the maps, and we're going to show another one here, I think, that we're taking D3, um, Ardennes is really encouraging. Here it is here. Oh, yeah. This was a really iconic um, location in World War II along the Siegfried Line. And this battle happened as part of the Battle of the Bulge. So you can also find out a lot of history on this. Yeah. Um, but each of our maps really tries to encourage, as Sean said, the different play styles. And with that, you'll be really encouraged to level up each of your divisions and understand when to take them in based off mm -hmm. your map and your mode. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you, the the locations in the maps are, are varied. So, you know, your mountain division that's kind of more focused on longer range kind of sniper gameplay that, you know, there's areas in the maps where, where that division can kind of live and thrive and, um, you know, closer up gameplay with the, uh, the expeditionary division, which is kind of more close range shotguns and things right. like that. Um, you know, the, there's areas where each of those has their, their strengths and weaknesses, and you can kind of mix it up as you go along. Nice. Okay, we have some live questions. Uh, Rick Crow asks, Will the maps be bigger or the same tight maps? Uh, so we, we shot for range there as well. So you're going to have some smaller, really fast-paced maps, and you're going you're gonna to also have some that we kind of open up a little bit. And again, it's, it's varying that, that gameplay style. So we give players opportunity to, to have different experiences. Since you base them all on historical locations, did you pick specific locations that would fit those criteria? We did, yeah. Um, so history obviously is super important to us. Want to make sure that we reflect the history behind World War II and multiplayer gameplay. So, you know, want to make sure that that players feel like they're a part of that. And uh, yeah, definitely choosing locations that um, that will kind of focus more or less on on certain play styles. Sure. The thing for us, you know, trying to capture the authenticity of the game. The team went to these locations. So we, with our military historian, Marty Morgan, went to Normandy. We went to Gibraltar. We've sat in the Ardennes Forest in the middle of 10 degree snow um, to try and bring these to life in a really respectful wow. way. Yeah, That's a great job perk. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, Elliot Dunn asks, can we have some names of multiplayer maps and what they contain? Please shout me out. I just did, Elliot Dunn. What's up? <laughs> hey. But What's your we... favorite map, Sean? My favorite map, ah oh, man, that's that's a hard one. Um, definitely a fan of Point to Hawk. Uh, also, you know, yeah. again, it's that it's that, you know, if you ask people what they want out of a out of a World War II Call of Duty multiplayer map, the the D Day scenario, the trenches, the bunkers, all that stuff. Um, right. So I'm a fan of that map. It's got you know, like I said, the trenches in the middle are super intense, super fun to play in. Um, that's definitely up there uh, on my favorites. For are there sure. any you haven't announced yet? There are a couple you saw in the trailer that I don't think we've specifically called out. There's the USS Texas, the battleship map. That is a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. I keep saying ton of fun, don't I? I'm it's gonna, fine. It's everyone's going to make fun of me. It's a ton of fun. <laughs> um, the shovel scene, that brutal shovel slash scene, that's great. That happens in Gibraltar. That's a really great map as well. Yep. Uh, Mason Kelly asks, will we be parachuting into the maps? It was in the trailer, and I'm curious. Okay, so uh, the, the parachuting into the maps, there's a, uh, there's a score streak that's... Uh, in the game at E3 called paratroopers. So yeah. You call in paratroopers, they, they deploy into the battle. It's a really cool, just That's super awesome. World War II kind of thing to see. <laughs> um, yeah, it's cool Sweet, stuff. so you can, you will be, if you are that specific. That's a score streak. Oh, that's a score streak. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, sweet. Um, okay, I think we've done it on maps. I want to transition into war mode. Uh, war mode. I think okay. everyone wants to transition into <laughs> war mode. This sounds awesome. What can you tell us about war mode? Yeah, war mode is something that's really special to everybody working on it. We've had three years to sort of capture the spirit of a true Axis versus ally battle. I remember when Sean first pitched this idea, we were calling it Big War because we wanted to really bring together this concept of working as a team. Right. And Call of Duty multiplayer is fantastic. We all love it. It's a bit of a lone wolf experience. Mm -hmm. But in war mode, you really are working strategically against these objectives. And these objectives are grounded in World War II history, so they're relatable. Defend the bridge, uh, escort the tank, take out the 88. So war is on the floor at E3 for the first time. You're seeing a lot of it in the trailer. It's pretty special. And didn't you tell me earlier that it actually has a loose storyline as well, which you don't get out of multiplayer for the most part? Yeah, that's that's definitely one of the big things with War is is that we wanted players to, to really feel like 
you know, not only are they fighting in the iconic locations of World War II, but they're actually partaking in, a, in an actual World War II battle. So oh. there is a kind of a loose narrative thread that kind of ties things together in the map. And there's an overall mission objective that you're trying to do. And each step along the way is kind of progress towards that. Wonderful. You can see the guys jumping off the, right the truck, deploying so that's your into whole the battle. Team right there. Yep, that's your, that's your team. That's great. So, yeah. So why are players going to love War Mode? I mean, it's a it's a brand new experience. It's It's like nothing that there's been in Call of Duty multiplayer before. There's never been this kind of narrative-driven, objective-based, attacker-defender gameplay. You can see right now they're, they're fighting over the bridge. So the attacking side here is trying to build the bridge um, to, to allow their armor across the bridge. Um, and then the, the Axis side is, is kind of hunkering down and, and defending against that. And they're putting up MG nests and all those kind of things. So it, it really is a, a brand new type of gameplay experience. And I, I, think, I think players are going to love it. Awesome. Okay, Taylor White asks, so are there going to be core matches or just war mode? And are we going to see team deathmatch, domination, or kill confirmed core types? So on the floor, we have team deathmatch on Point to Hawk. People will be playing that today. They'll also be playing domination on our dens, the map we showed you earlier. So we will have a variety of beloved game modes, and war mode is part of that as the new addition. Great. Uh, t Dylan Halder asks, will we get specific objectives in war mode? Sounds like yes. Yes, yeah, definitely. I mean, again, you know, doing, we wanted players doing the things that soldiers did in World War II, right? So you're, you're capturing territory, you're building bridges, you're escorting armored divisions, you're, um, you're destroying artillery pieces. So the, you know, the war maps are, you know, built out of those pieces. And again, it's, it's, there's a mission, right? You've got a primary goal that you're trying to accomplish with each, each of these maps. So. Awesome. Okay, Jared Hornfeck, who, according to his icon picture, looks like he just got married, so congratulations. <laughs> um, how many people can play war mode at one time? So war mode is, uh, is 6v6. Um, like the like the core 66. Six v six. Oh, I was like, what? That's insane. <laughs> well, that's yeah, where we started actually I was like, three that's such years a ago. Random number too. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing about war is it fits in the full multiplayer ecosystem, right? Exactly. So your six v six experience, your progression, your divisions, the way that you um, rank up will extend both from team deathmatch to domination mm -hmm. to hard point to war. All right. We wanted players also to be able to kind of carry on with their, their party, right? You yeah. got five of your friends that, that you partied up for, you know, TDM or DOM or whatever game when you're playing. We wanted those, that same group to be able to just drop over into war and just kind yeah. of have that seamless transition. So. And getting five of your friends together is a lot easier than 65 of your friends. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Who's got 65 friends? I know, exactly. <laughs> uh, Elliot Young asks, will war mode just feature certain maps or all the maps? So war mode, and, and that's that's one of the things that um, you know excites me about war mode too, is that it really is a tailor built experience. So you know I don't even really like to call it a mode because it's it's more than a mode. It's not something that drops into every map. It's these maps are built. Is it to, a way of life, to, Sean? Yes. You could one could call it a way of life. That could be. <laughs> it's a, been known around the studio as a way of life because it's big and it's a custom maps built just for that experience. Nice. I do have one more question, although I feel like maybe we just answered this. Edward Palomares Jr. asks how many players are in each mode, but that's 6 v 6 Yes, right. so 12 players, yeah. Yes. D does it have to be? Uh, no, I mean, we, we support yeah. a range of, of players. But, Great. Yeah. So if you only have four friends, you can still play. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, thank you guys for joining us. Is there anything else thank you, you. want to say to our fans at home? Oh, look, on behalf of everybody at Sledgehammer Games, I mean, the studio has poured their hearts and souls into this. It's not just the studio. I mean, I know they're, they're tuned in, but it's the extended families, all the people that support us as we bring this game that I know are watching too. So thank you for that. Um, we wanted to give an exclusive sneak look at one of the headquarters features um, that nobody's seen yet before. So I don't know, can I show that? Can we show yeah, that? Yeah, please, what? I'm all about yeah, exclusives, let's this show this. is the virtual firing range, firing range as you know <gasps> from AW. And I had no idea back. we had an exclusive. How I exciting. Know, how cool, look at the Grand <laughs> and the bayonet. And now it's competitive. Oh, wow. Now it's social. You can challenge for shootouts, as Greg mentioned earlier. Just the beginning of what you're going to be able to bring to life in your headquarters experience. That was really cool. Thank you, guys. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you all at home for the great questions about the game. We, we're really grateful to have such a passionate community as you guys. You're awesome. And we can't wait to show you more in the next few months. Um, thank you to the team from Sledgehammer Games for taking the time to speak with us. 
I hope you survive your E3. <laughs> and there's still a lot more to come at E3, so stay tuned. I'm actually going to go down to the floor and talk to fans who have just gotten their hands on the multiplayer and see what they think about it. Uh, and as you guys probably heard last night, the beta for Call of Duty World War II will be coming to PlayStation 4 on August 25th. We also wanted to mention that the private beta will be coming to Xbox One starting on September 1st. So get ready for hands-on multiplayer, everyone. Stay tuned for more episodes of Making Call of Duty. On our next episode, we're going to be talking about my favorite thing in the world, zombies. <laughs> so we want to hear all the questions you have about zombies in World War II. I am Allison Hayslip, and have an awesome E3.